Welcome to the Feeding House Ministries, a teaching ministry that focuses on your soul and your eternal destiny. A ministry that feeds you the Word of God. And for those who contribute to this ministry financially, I would like to thank you for your tax-deductible donation. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Psalm 138, and I will be reading verses 1 through 8 from the New King James Version. I will praise you with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing praises to you. And this is little g gods, false gods. I will worship toward your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth. For you have magnified your word above all your name. In the day when I cried out, you answered me and made me bold with strength in my soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, when they hear the words of your mouth. Yes, they shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord is on high, yet he regards the lowly, but the proud he knows from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. You will stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand will save me. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the works of your hands. It has often been said that trouble will either bring out the best in us or it will bring out the worst in us. And without question, serious trouble in our lives serves as a test to see how we will respond. Years ago in the pioneer days of aviation, a pilot was making a flight around the world. After he had been gone for some two hours from his last landing field, he heard a noise in his plane which he recognized as the gnawing of a rat. He realized that while his plane had been on the ground, a rat had gotten in. And for all he knew, the rat could be gnawing through the, a vital cable or control of the plane. It was a very serious situation, and he was both concerned and anxious. And at first, like so many of us, he didn't know what to do. Because it was two hours back to the landing field from which he had taken off, and more than two hours to the next field ahead. Then he remembered that the rat is a rodent. And it wasn't made for height. It was made to live on the ground and under the ground. And so the pilot began to climb. He went up 1,000 feet, then another 1,000 feet, and then another, until he was more than 20,000 feet up. And then the gnawing ceased. It stopped. The rat was dead. He couldn't survive in the atmosphere of those heights. More than two hours later, the pilot brought the plane safely to the next landing field and found the dead rat. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, trouble is a rodent, a rat. It can't live in the secret place of the Most High. It can't breathe in the atmosphere made vital by prayer and familiarity with the scripture. Trouble dies when we go to the Lord through prayer and his word. And in this passage of scripture today, David was surrounded by trouble. And for his own safety, he was forced to flee Jerusalem after Absalom, his son, had turned many people against him. But David's response in this trouble is far more significant for us than its specific occasion. David praised the Lord. He sought the Lord's glory and he declared his confidence in the Lord. And as a result, his prayer serves as an inspiration, an encouragement, 
and that an example for us when we have to deal with difficult challenges. And following David's example will help us to be certain that trouble brings out the best in us, not the worst. Thus my subject for this beautiful Sunday morning is when you are surrounded by trouble. Verses one through three says, I will praise you with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing praises to you. I will worship toward your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth. For you have magnified your word above all your name. In the day when I cried out, you answered me and made me bold with strength in my soul. When you're surrounded by trouble, make a renewed commitment to praise the Lord wholeheartedly. In the midst of trouble, David renewed his commitment to praise the Lord. And he was determined to praise the Lord with his whole heart. That is, he was determined to praise the Lord with his full attention, as well as with all of his emotions and strength. David said, I will praise you with my whole heart. Before the gods, those false gods, I will sing praises to you. And we're to lift God up before the so-called little G gods of this world, false gods. And David was promising to lift up the Lord before the so-called little G gods of the world whenever the opportunity arose. He promised that he would stand boldly before the other nations and their false gods, their little G gods, and praise the Lord, the only true and living God. David promised that he would bow down and praise his holy name. But David also vowed to worship or, or bow down in the direction of God's temple and praise his holy name. And there are specific reasons for worshiping the Lord in his holy name. And we worship the Lord in his holy name because of the Lord's loving kindness, his unfailing covenant love, and covenants aren't broken. We worship the Lord in his holy name because of his truth or his faithfulness. And the Lord is true to himself. He's true to his holy character and he's true to his attributes, making him absolutely trustworthy. We worship the Lord in his holy name because he has magnified his word above all things. We worship the Lord in his holy name because in the day when David cried out to him, he answered David's prayers and he will answer ours if we will just trust and obey him. Amen. We worship the Lord in his, holy, in his holy name because he revived David's soul and he will revive ours and mine needs to be revived. He strengthened David. He encouraged him. He made David bold with strength in his soul, and he will do the same for us. But when we are surrounded by trouble, mm -hmm. we often find it difficult to praise the Lord. Instead, we are tempted to murmur and complain, or sometimes we are even tempted to blame God for our challenging circumstances. But like David, when trouble strikes, we need to make a fresh commitment to praise the Lord. Amen. Just because we have the presence of trouble in our lives doesn't mean that God has let us down or that he has been unfaithful to us because God never changes. Amen. Even in our most difficult or painful situations, the Lord's love for us is steadfast and unfailing. God loves us. And in spite of our troubling situation, he's still trustworthy, totally trustworthy. And as believers, God has equipped us not only with his holy word, but he has equipped us with the power of his great name. He hears us when we cry out to him and he answers our prayers, hallelujah. When we're at our lowest point, God strengthens and encourages us to push on. This is why God is always worthy of our praise and worship. When we're overwhelmed by trouble, we should praise God before others 
and we should fall down before God in worship. When you trust the promises of God and pray, the Lord will answer your prayer above and beyond anything he promised. Amen. It's another way of expressing Ephesians chapter 3 verses 19 through 20. To know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. God gave David boldness to face his enemies and the strength to defeat them. And he will do the same for us if we, we will just trust his promises and pray and obey him. Philippians 4 verses 6 through 7 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. God answers prayer because it brings glory to his name. So thank the Lord. Let everything in you say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just keep in mind that while you're thanking the Lord, mm -hmm. angels are listening as you sing your thanks. Kneel in worship facing the Lord's holy temple and say again, thank you, Lord. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for most holy is your name. Thank you for most holy is your word. The moment you call out to God, God steps in and answers you and makes you bold with strength in your soul. Very simply, thank the Lord with all your heart. Sing to him before all the false gods. Bow down facing his holy temple, thanking him for his love and loyalty and for having his name and his word greater than anything. Thank him that on the day you call to him, he answered you. Thank him for making you strong and brave. Verses 4 through 6 says, All the kings of the earth shall praise you. O oh Lord, when they hear the words of your mouth. Yes, they shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord is on high, yet he regards the lowly, but the proud he knows from afar. When you're surrounded by trouble, pray for God's coming kingdom. David prayed earnestly for the other rulers of the earth to believe in the Lord, and I pray that same prayer. But although David was praying for the world of his day, his prayer was also prophetic. God's kingdom will not come on earth until Jesus Christ returns. Mm -hmm. And David prayed that all kings will praise and thank the Lord that they would praise him when they hear his righteous instructions. But not only that, David longed for all the kings of the earth, all the presidents of the earth to come to know the Lord as he knew him. If they would hear the Lord's righteous instructions and truth, they would see the Lord for who he is, and they too would praise him. David prayed that all kings would sing about the Lord's ways because of his amazing glory. He prayed that the rulers of other nations would not only hear God's word, but would also learn about God's ways. Because when they truly understood what the Lord was like, they would see his greatness and his amazing glory. And as a result, they would sing about his marvelous ways. David prayed that all kings will know that though God is highly exalted, he looks compassionately on the lowly. He looks compassionately on those who will humble themselves and acknowledge him. When the other kings learned about the Lord, they would see where his glory truly was. They would see the Lord's glory in his love for humanity. But in contrast, God rejects the proud. He rejects all who exalt themselves above him. Isaiah 66 verse 2 says, For all those things my hand has made, and all those things that exist, says the Lord. 
But on this one will I look, on him who is poor and of a contrite spirit, a repentant spirit, and who trembles at my word. James chapter 4 verse 6 says, But he gives more grace. Therefore he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. In essence, David prayed as Jesus taught us to pray for God's kingdom to come to earth. Matthew chapter 6 verse 10 says, Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Israel was a theocracy. That is, Israel was a system of government in which priests ruled in the name of God or in the name of a little g God, a false God. But the Lord was Israel's true king. And if the kings of other nations would fear the Lord and follow his laws, God would reign over the earth. But neither David's prayer nor ours will be answered until Christ returns to earth to establish his kingdom. Then he will reign as king of kings and lords of lords. And on that day, every knee will bow to Christ and every tongue will confess him as Lord. Philippians chapter 2 verses 9 through 11 says, Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven and those on earth and those under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We should faithfully pray for that day to come just as Jesus instructed us the day when Christ returns to establish his kingdom. And so when you're surrounded by trouble mm -hmm. Pray for God's coming kingdom. Amen. And while you're praying, keep in mind that though the Lord is great, he cares for the humble, but he keeps his distance from the proud. And here's why. God who is high above mm -hmm. sees far below. Amen. Therefore, no matter the distance, he knows everything about us. And so as a believer, pray to the Lord to let all the kings of the earth praise him. Pray that they have heard the words that the Lord speaks. Pray that they will sing about what the Lord has done because the Lord's glory is so great. Pray that they will know though the Lord is supreme, he takes care of the humble, mm -hmm. but he stays away from those who are proud. Amen. Verse 7 says, Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. You will search, stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies and your right hand will save me. When you're surrounded by trouble, acknowledge your confidence in the Lord. Declare your confidence in the Lord. As you walk through difficult circumstances, God will preserve your life. He will deliver you from your enemies and he will fulfill his divine purpose for your life. Hallelujah. Though you walk into the midst of trouble, God will protect you. He will keep you. He will revive you. With one hand, he will strike your enemies. But with his other hand, he will save you. And you can be like David. David was confident that the troubles surrounding him would not overtake him. He was confident that God would revive him. He was confident that God would preserve his life as he walked in the midst of trouble. Amen. Furthermore, David was confident that the Lord would protect him as he faced his enemies. Exodus chapter 15 verse 6 says, Your right hand, O Lord, has become glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, has dashed the enemy in pieces. David was confident that God would fight for him. He was confident that God would stretch out his mighty right hand on his behalf. And Psalm 60 verse 5 says that your beloved may be delivered, saved with your right hand. And hear me. The right hand of God is a symbol of God's authority and his unparalleled power. Amen. And David was confident that God would deliver him. Amen. And you can have the same confidence that God will deliver you. Amen. Verse 8 says that the Lord will perfect 
that which concerns you. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the works of your hands. Perfect means to end, to finish, to accomplish, to come to an end, to cease, to perform, to fulfill. It's the completing, the finishing, and the perfecting of God's work in your life. The idea is that God will perfect and fulfill all his promises and purposes for your life. Amen. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 says, Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. I've often said that God started this good work in me and he will finish it. Amen. And when you have this confidence in God, the Lord will fulfill his purpose for you. Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you mm. will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. And your confidence in the midst of trouble is rooted in your unwavering faith in God's ultimate control of your life. You're absolutely sure, you're confident that the Lord will perfect or complete whatever concerns you. Yeah. That is, the Lord will fulfill his purpose for your life. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing, absolutely nothing that can stop God from carrying out his plan for you. Amen. Yet your confidence is to be tied to something even stronger than God's sovereignty. Your confidence is to be tied to God's mercy. It's to be tied to God's unfailing love that endures forever. All you have to do is lay claim to the Lord's unfailing love as you call on him not to forsake you. I prayed, God, please don't forsake me. You are the works of God's hands, and all God asks you to do is believe. Believe that the Lord will complete his work in you. Mm -hmm. And in your believing, you need to be confident in the Lord, confident that he will will help you through all your troubles no matter how numerous or severe they may be. Amen. Just think you serve a God so great that he takes your enemies evil intentions and uses them to accomplish his plan for your life. The Lord brings good from evil and he works everything together for your good. But why? And it's because you love him and you've been called according to his purpose and you have confidence in him. First Peter chapter 5 verse 10 says, In his kindness God called you to share in his eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus. So after you have suffered a little while, he will restore, support, and strengthen you. And he will place you on a firm foundation. God is like a master artist who's painting a beautiful picture of your life. And he's committed to perfecting or finishing it and making it a masterpiece. God wants to perfect our lives in Christ Jesus. And through the Holy Spirit, he's shaping us in the image of his son Jesus. Therefore, with this truth in mind, when you're surrounded by trouble, you must always speak in faith and confidence in the Lord. You should never allow fear or doubt to rule or take control of your spirit. Mm -hmm. But neither should you allow words of doubt to escape your lips. Your confidence in the midst of trouble must be rooted in your unwavering faith in God's ultimate control of your life. David was. David was absolutely sure that the Lord would perfect or complete whatever concerned him. That is, David was absolutely sure that the Lord would, would f fulfill his purpose for his life. Yes. You can walk in that same surety yeah. that nothing can stop God from carrying out his plan for yeah. your life. Just remember that your confidence is tied to God's mercy, mm -hmm. his unfailing love that endures forever. As you call on the Lord not to forsake you, lay claim to his unfailing love. Mm -hmm. You're the works of God's hands. Therefore, all you have to do is believe Believe that the Lord will complete his work in you.
You need to be confident in the Lord. Confident that the Lord will help you through all your troubles, no matter how numerous or severe they are. Mm -hmm. Just remember that the God you serve is so great that he takes your enemies' evil intentions against you and uses them to accomplish his plan for your life. Amen. Genesis chapter 50 verse 20 says, You intended to harm me, but God intended it all for good. He brought me to this position so I could save the lives of many people. Amen. No matter how much trouble surrounds you, the Lord brings good from evil, mm -hmm. and he works everything together for good. You're good. But when trouble surrounds you, always remember to speak in faith and confidence in the Lord. And re remember to never allow fear or doubt to rule or take control of your spirits. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And last but not least, you should never allow words of doubt to escape your lips. 2 Corinthians 4 verses 13 through 14 says, And since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. Even when there's trouble all around you, the Lord keeps, will keep you alive. When your enemies are angry, God will reach down and save you by his power. Yeah. The Lord will do everything for you. His love continues forever. Mm -hmm. He made you and he will not leave you. And so when you are surrounded by trouble, make a renewed commitment to praise the Lord wholeheartedly. A commitment to lift him up before the so-called little g-gods of this world. Make a renewed commitment to bow down and praise his holy name because of his unfailing love. Because of his truth and faithfulness. Make a renewed commitment because he has exalted his word above all things. Because he answers your prayers and because he revives, strengthens, and encourages you. When you're surrounded by trouble... Pray for God's coming kingdom. Pray that all kings will praise and thank God when they hear his righteous instructions. Pray that all kings will sing about his ways because of his amazing glory. Pray that all kings will know that though God is highly exalted, mm -hmm. he looks after the lowly, the humble, but he rejects the proud. Amen. When you're surrounded by trouble, Acknowledge your confidence in God. Acknowledge that the Lord will protect you in the midst of trouble and when you're facing all your enemies. Acknowledge that the Lord will fulfill his purpose for you because of his love that endures forever and because he will not forsake you. This is what God will do for you when you're surrounded by trouble. This is the Lord's goodness to the faithful and the unfailing love of the Lord never ends. By his mercies, when you're surrounded by trouble, he keeps you from complete destruction. Let us pray. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In Jesus' name, amen.